All right, folks, today we're going to talk about what is SQL. So before we start, you might remember that we have covered a lot of concepts, right? So, so far we have covered the concepts of database, right? Database is nothing but an organized collection of information. We also covered the concept of database management system, which is a piece of software. That's all it is that is used to manage your database that is used to manage information. And there are tons of database management systems available in the market. In this course, we're going to use MySQL, but then there's Oracle, there's Microsoft, there is Postgres and so many others. We also learned the concept of CRUD, which is nothing. It's an acronym that goes for create, read, update and delete. And in the previous video, we learned everything about keys. We learned what primary keys are, which is a unique identifier to identify rows, especially when, you know, employees might have common names. We learned about foreign keys that will help you to establish a relationship between two tables. And we learned about composite keys. They are a type of primary keys. It's just that it's a unique key that is created by concatenating or by combining two or more columns. Today, we're going to talk about SQL, right? That's what this course is about. We're going to write a ton of SQL queries. But today, let's focus on why we need SQL. So SQL is a short form. It's an acronym that stands for Structured Query Language. And it is a language that is used to interact with your relational database management systems, right? So why do we need SQL in the first place? Remember that your relational database management systems are systems. They are a piece of technology. They don't understand natural language like English, Hindi, Spanish, German. Therefore, we need to use a language so that they understand what we are trying to say, right? We can't ask a relational database management uh, in simple language saying, hey, can you can you please give me a list of employees who make more than $30,000 a year? Therefore, we use SQL. That's the language that relationship relational database management systems speak. And with SQL, you can do host of activities. You can create databases. You can create tables inside those databases. For example, you can create two tables, one that has a list of employees, the other one that has a list of managers. You can add data. You can retrieve data. You can update or even delete data, right? So remember the example of Amazon where Amazon adds products to its database every single day. As a user, you're retrieving data. You're reading the Amazon information when you open that website. When there's a price change, you want to update the price and that is the update piece. In the real world, you don't really delete data. Uh, in fact, deleting data is considered a bad practice, but let's say you create a table, uh, a test table, you may want to delete that data. So again, remember in the real world, do not delete data. It's not a great practice. Finally, you can use SQL queries to perform administrative tasks, such as you may want to do user management or import and export. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't know is that SQL is actually a hybrid language. It's a combination of four languages and the four languages are data query language, data definition language, data control language and data manipula manipulation language. So the description is in its name. Data query language is used to query information. Query meaning read information, get information from a database. Data definition language helps in defining the database schemas, right? And we'll cover some of these concepts in the future videos, but database schema is the structure of your table. So let's say you create an employee table. It can have four columns, uh, employee ID, first name, last name, and maybe higher date. That is your schema, right? Uh, third is the database control language, which is used for controlling access such as user and permission management. And finally, data manipulation language where you're manipulating the data. So you're inserting data, creating data, uh, updating data or deleting data. This is, you don't need to remember this, but sometimes when you're in interviews, they might ask you, hey, what is DML or what is, you know, what is data query language? So just remember these four pieces. Uh, purely from an interview perspective. So what is a query, right? Query is nothing. It's a set of instructions that you give the relational database systems to do something, right? To create, to read, to update data and so on. And really the goal of writing the query, right? The goal of writing the query is to provide information to perform tasks efficiently. So for example, Amazon has 350 million products. You don't want to read all those 350 million products and then sift through those products and find your product. So when you're searching for a product, it could be a calculator, it could be a Fitbit, it could be uh, you know, a weight tracking device, anything that you're searching for, you type in 
the Amazon search box and it filters the entire data set and provides you the results that match your criteria. And that's the goal of writing queries. The same with update. You don't want to update the entire table. Let's say a, an employee gets promoted and their salary changes. You don't want to update everyone's salary. You only want to update the salary of the person whose salary has changed. And therefore, you will write an update command that you know uh, will update the salary of the person where you will specify the update criteria that matches with the employee ID. And again, we'll cover all these things in future videos. And here is a quick example. So the quick example is select star from employees where customer ID is 101. So what this is saying is select star. What star means is show me all the columns, right? Not all the data, show me all the vertical columns from employees table where customer ID is 101. So SQL is going to go look at the table, look at the customer ID, find a customer ID of 101 and then show us all the corresponding columns. That is all for today's video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can install MySQL and then we start creating projects. We start writing SQL queries. I am excited and I hope you are too.